At Yapo and Shopify, we feel lucky to help brands like yours dream big for your customers. You're always pushing the boundaries, creating the best and most exciting experiences for your shoppers. And we're with you every step of the way. But sometimes, your dreams fall short when your tech just can't keep up with your vision. Well, that's about to change. Yapo and Shopify are joining forces with a new partnership. We're linking our platforms and developing new features so you can understand your customers better, create a stronger community, and turn more shoppers into loyal fans. So go ahead, start dreaming even bigger. today to learn more about this new exciting partnership between Yapo and Shopify. My name is Moran Khubian, I'm the Director of Global Partner Marketing at Yapo, and I'm here to celebrate a historic multi-year platform partnership that will create deeper integrations between the Shopify and Yapo products and platforms. Our two companies share a common belief that for the future of commerce to thrive, brands need to own direct relationships with customers. That means that marketers like you need smarter tools to help you connect with customers, but also really understand your shoppers. And that's why we created this partnership. We want to align our product development roadmaps so we can work together to develop shopping experiences that are seamlessly connected between touch points and also improve one-to-one -one relationships between you and your customers. Yapo will also be an early launch partner for new Shopify features which means that we're aspiring to develop first to market technologies to help merchants of all sizes stand out in a super competitive landscape. Basically, what it means is that it's an incredible, great time to be a brand using both Shopify and Yapo. To find out how we plan to do all of this, we're going to hear from Tomer Tagrin, the CEO and co-founder of Yapo, and Brandon Chu, VP of Product Acceleration at Shopify. They'll share all the details of the partnership, as well as their vision for the future of e-commerce technology. We'll then have a roundtable discussion with Nick Sharma, CEO of Sharma Brands, and speakers from HealthAid and Starface about how this partnership will impact the challenges they face every day as growing Shopify brands. So without further ado, let's hear more about how these two great companies are coming together to disrupt the future of commerce. Hello, everyone. I'm Rosa Hu, VP of Product Marketing here at Yapo, and it is great to be here with you today. To discuss this exciting partnership and what it means to both Yapo and Shopify, I'm joined by two very special guests. So first, it's my pleasure to introduce Brandon Chu, VP of Product Acceleration at Shopify. So welcome, Brandon. Would you like to share a little bit more about yourself with our audience today? Thanks, Rosa. Hi, everyone. Uh, glad to be here. Yeah, so I've been at Shopify for six years. Uh, right now, I'm a VP on the product acceleration team. So we do investments and M&A on behalf of the company. But I've actually spent most of my time at Shopify building up our developer ecosystem and platform. So the App Store, the API, our developer program, uh, and working with amazing companies like Yapo for, the, for about four years uh, prior to that. So definitely been so impressed with how Yapo and our ecosystem has grown through the years and uh, really happy to be here. Great. Thank you for being here. Um, and next, we're joined by Yapo's very own co-founder and CEO, Tomer Tagrin. So welcome, Tomer. Would you like to say a few words as well? Yes, very much. So first of all, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, super happy to have you. I'm Tomer, one of the two co-founders of Yotpo. I lost my voice a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'll just say that for those of you who don't know, uh, Brandon and Matt, but Brandon was like wrapping up the deal and Brandon became like a newly uh, father of two. Uh, so his second kid. So congratulations on that, Brandon. Thank um, you. And yes, I just before this actually, uh, before this meeting, I was looking for my old uh, Shopify uh, emails. And actually I found my first email uh, when it wasn't even Shopify.com, I got like an email from Howley that's like a different uh, suffix. I forget like the name. I think it was, yeah, Jade Pixel or something like that. Yeah, Jade Pixel, yeah. <laughs> um, so very much like we'll talk about the partnership in a second, but uh, super, super excited to have Brandon here and have everyone here today. 
Great. Thank you. All right. Well, let's jump straight in. So we'll start by talking about the relationship between Yapo and Shopify. Now, there's a lot of history here already. So Tomer, let's start with you. You've been driving this critical relationship from the start. Can you walk our audience through our partnership with Shopify so far? Sure. So we started actually two developers, me and Omri, um, and we had an idea um, based on a very bad personal experience to really solve like authenticity uh, for between like reviewers and e-commerce brands. And we built it, but we need some e-commerce brand and we didn't know how to get some because we didn't know marketing. And then we found like a really cool company that has like great APIs called Shopify. And we actually started to develop on top of that. And we had some questions. They had like actually pretty responsive uh, team and roughly easily and we actually get like i don't know the, the application work i think even before there was like like clear certification we actually work with the developers on shopify side and it was like a really amazing experience for us and i think after like a month we got like 20 customers using uh, the product which was horrible like nothing happened no reviews no nothing <laughs> it was just like a simple widget on site and, and actually then one of our customers, it's called The Loop Loft, Ryan, he's the founder, he sold it since then, but he all of a sudden started generating like, I don't know, 15 reviews a week. And we were like, what the hell is going on? So we picked up a phone called Ryan and he gave us like a bunch of product insight, what he did, emails he sent and stuff that he did that was basically the foundations of uh, the first product of Yotpo. And, and you know, since then, Shopify has been like, such a huge part in what Yotpo is doing in different aspects, you know, from the business side to how do we build products to even inspiration for me as a founder or the culture of Yotpo. And, and like, I'm really, really excited about today because I think it's, it really is another step in our very long-term relationship. Tomer, when was, uh, when was that? What year was that? Like 2014 when? or third? 12, 2012, wow. Yeah, so like our platform back then was a drop in the bucket of relative to where it is today. Like we have like just under 7,000 apps today, but back then it was probably less than like 50. Uh, so you guys definitely took a bet on uh, an emerging platform, I'd say at, at that moment. And like 20 customers doesn't sound a lot, but it might've been a lot at that time <laughs> in terms of growth. So, uh, you know, I love that story. It was huge. It was yeah, yeah, it was. Like, and, uh, and, and really back then I was like, it was really hard to even find customers like in this space who are going, uh, you know, e-commerce first and are smaller DTC brands. Uh, so, you know, it, it was, I think I love that story because it kind of shows like both like how scrappy our developer ecosystem and humble it began as well as how, how humble and small Shopify was at that time. And really it's through working with the merchants and understanding and iterating with them over time that both the platform and our partners and, and Yapo uh, came to grow. And, and really from a simple feature to today, like being such a robust platform is, is really incredible. Amazing. So what you're both telling me is that all of this history was all building up momentum to this very moment, right? So <laughs> Brandon, will you tell us why from your perspective, this partnership was just a natural next step for both? Maybe I, I just want to share one more story, which I think is interesting. Sorry. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. So I think in the first Unite, I think it was the first Shopify Unite and we came back and I remember we were sitting in the office and people were talking and it was like, you know, people went to other conferences and then a bunch of us went to Shopify Unite and one of our angels came like accidentally, like a day after we came back. And he asked us, he still remembers that every time I talked to him and he asked us like, oh, where you can, like, what are you talking about? We were in the kitchen or something. And one of the team, it's oh, look, we've been to like Unite, it's Shopify conference, and it's so different from anything we saw. And then he said like, so what do you say? What happened? Why it was so special? And then someone else came and just say like, you know what, just buy their stock. It's gonna be much <laughs> bigger than e-commerce. And this was like a very long time ago. And like, since then, by the way, it's like the, the story or how we think about the relationship with Shopify definitely like very much evolved to this moment. Totally. I love that story. Thank you. Yeah. I was there at that first thing. I think I actually spoke at it. I had only joined the company about 
about six months earlier and it was the first conference uh, developer conference that we did so it was a it was a big moment for the company and i think that's when we really started to get serious about our developer platform because just a little you know quick context of it really started as just like a set of apis for individual merchants to uh, send their data back to whatever middleware or backend systems that they had. And it was only through just the organic growth of the developer ecosystem that we realized that these developers are making apps that had, were solving common problems across merchants. And that's when we started to build the app store and all these types of things. So uh, it, it you know, now is obvious in hindsight, but it's a huge part of, of what makes Shopify uh, uh, work for merchants. So, so yeah, like, you know, leading up to here, I think, uh, it, it, this is a very special partnership. It is, um, the way I think about it is like our ecosystem, it has a ton of diversity on Shopify. We have tens of thousands of developers uh, making all sorts of things for merchants. But, you know, and by and large, we actually kind of have the same relationship with almost everyone uh, on the platform. And, and that, that's by design. Like, you know, we want to be an open platform and, 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 and neutral and great like that. Uh, but we do recognize, you know, that there's moments where, a partner's scale, it presents an opportunity for us to rethink how uh, we work together in the long run. And there's not a lot of partners that really reach that type of scale, but, but Yapo is, is, is one. And, you know, when I say scale, I'm talking about a few things. So it's like just the impact on merchants, the hundreds of thousands of merchants uh, use Yapo's products. Uh, also the really deep feature set that Yapo has both built and acquired uh, over over time, which I'm you know I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk more about, uh, and I think a really important other aspect is that that mentality to listen to merchants, to iterate on that product, and have that that kind of shared mission with Shopify to continue to enable merchants to succeed more as independents, and and finally, it's also just the ability to run a technology company at scale. Like there's just a, like uh, there's a lot of developers out there who are who are fantastic, but they would have stopped. Right, you know, in, in, with Tomer's story, they would have stopped a year later and that would have been their business and it would have been a great small business for many, many years doing that one thing. But the ambition uh, of Tomer and the group uh, and, and the, uh, the scale of Yapo, I think, is what really sets it apart. So, you know, with that in mind, we approached Yapo to both invest in the company and deepen our relationship uh, with them. It's something we think of as an alliance with our ecosystem, really for the betterment of merchants and for commerce at large. Tomer, anything to add to that? Yeah, so first of all, I'll say that for those of you in the ecosystem that don't know Brandon, Brandon is like, on a personal level, I'd say like, we know each other for a few years. And I think when Brandon approached us, uh, we were like super excited because like I mentioned, Shopify is a big part of Yotpo. And for us, it was natural that Shopify will be a shareholder in Yotpo, that Shopify will like, I think have a very shared vision and focus on the merchants which for us has been like, you know, a lighthouse. And, and I think it just makes sense. And what I'm super, super excited about is actually like the benefits for merchants, right? Well, like I do think like the, the shared approach and the same humbleness, the same iteration on the merchant success together will drive like a lot of innovation, will drive like a lot of impact on mutual merchants. And I think that's like what's really, really excited. Um, and I can't wait for the next few years to unfold themselves because a lot of like really awesome things are gonna to happen to merchants. Absolutely. So maybe Tomer, you can share a little bit more about your vision for this partnership then. What can we actually expect from the partnership? Yeah, so first of all, we, we cannot say anything, but we definitely gonna like launch, um, let's call it mutual capabilities where we think merchants can benefit. It can be like shared of data. It can be like a type of integration, but a bunch of things that we want to do together. I think that's the first thing. Second thing is definitely aligning on like the future of e-commerce. I think that's uh, for us, what's really, really important. And when you think about right, owning the relationships between brands and the consumers, and that's like so, so important because as e-commerce is getting bigger and definitely we are very early days in our e-commerce day, the problem of how to win over consumer attention become harder and brands must own the relationship with consumers, right? They have to build that community. They have to engage that community and they get to learn, and they get to learn how to get that community buying again and again and again. And I think that's what we're trying to do, right? As a company and 
having like the alignment with Shopify will give, really give it a lot of impact moving forward. Yeah, like it's, it's a really important point that, you know, one of the reasons that this partnership was so important to us and compelling is because Yapo is solving something that is just mission critical for merchants in the next three to five years, especially. I mean, it's going to marketing and, and customer loyalty and relationships is always going to be important, but really today it's an inflection point and the things driving it are the exponential increase in costs of ads, uh, driven also by things like, uh, you know, not allowing third-party cookies anymore on iOS, not even allowing, you know, or not allowing, but allowing people to create like ghost emails and things that are, you know, there for good reasons. They're there to con protect consumer privacy. But when you have those kind of headwinds as a merchant, you really have to figure out what are the ways that I'm actually going to build a relationship that can increase the long-term value uh, of those customers. And like sort of the bottom of the funnel in marketing speak is becoming more and more important. And Yapo's like the breadth of the capabilities that Yapo has and also the ways that they work together, like the different features within, within Yapo's feature set uh, or the different capabilities within the feature set are, are sort of a good vision of like the future of how it needs to work. Like being able to collect reviews through SMS, but then also get like user generated content through SMS as well. Uh, you know, that the value, like th those were the things that when we saw how Yapo was evolving its product, you know, it really proved to us that they're seeing where e-commerce is going and we need to like really work with companies like Yapo to make sure that merchants can continue to be successful because it's not going to be the same game that they played the last 10 years. Um, and, and I think that, you know, that's something that we take on as a responsibility to make sure that we are always uh, giving the capabilities to merchants to prepare them for, you know, what the realities of, of building a business are today. Tomer, anything else you want to touch upon for that question? Great. Well, at Yapo, we are definitely really proud that our products work in concert together to strengthen customer relationships and win customers for life. And a big part of that, the big, big part of how we do that is through empathy and baking that into our technology. So Tomer, how does Shopify and Yapo come together to achieve that end goal of helping brands strengthen those relationships with their customers? Yeah. Again, without getting into specific, I think it's it's all about a few things. First is aligning products, right? And spending like hours of mutual work, like dev and product and, and exactly that. And how do you help and can we accelerate certain experiences? Can there is certain data that can be injected back that can, you know, inform product decisions or fulfillment decisions or whatever it is. And, and the second thing is aligning the, also the go-to market and making sure that we're investing together in the merchant success. Um, and, and I think that's gonna be like a big, big part of the partnership moving forward. And, you know, we say a lot, it takes a village and we have like amazing partners uh, from like Shopify agencies. That's been like a huge part of the e-commerce ecosystem. And even for them, right? Because of our ability that to launch product and help them like understand it, test it, try it, uh, we can really accelerate the, the growth, the pace of innovation of e-commerce. And, and that's where we get like really, really excited about. And I also think from like from a very humble way, like we can learn a lot from Shopify. Brandon talked at the beginning about like operating a tech company at scale. So we have like really big aspirations. We really think that we can be like a huge part of the future and history of e-commerce. Um, and I think learning how to operate that on scale from engineering to product, to go to market, to strategy is something that uh, I really look forward to learn like from Brandon and the entire Shopify team. Yeah, I think it's like you characterize it really well because you know what you're describing is, is sort of like the day-to-day -day of how the relationship between the companies change and how information flows uh, and also how we jointly work together uh, on thinking about how to solve merchant problems. And th these are the things that compound every single day. Like for us to have more knowledge of like how Yapo is thinking about the customer journey on the, on the front end of a, of a buying experience allows us to actually reciprocally build our platform to extend itself in a way that actually uh, makes those experiences even more elegant. And like we, we started to do that with 
uh, our online store. Uh, so we just launched a new online store where, you know, within it, there's now like, you know, before I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be frank, like parts of it were really janky in the ways that apps would integrate into different parts of the customer experience. Uh, but now we've launched like sections everywhere and allow apps to actually embed those features and capabilities into the, that, that section framework. And that both allows like the app itself to be experienced in a more elegant way by the end customer, but probably more importantly, the merchant is able to actually implement these capabilities with just a click of a button. Like it's way less com complexity than it used to be. And it's actually showing how Shopify is becoming more of an operating system that you can build off of. Uh, and, and so the online store like too, is just like the beginning of like how the entire, uh, the entire experience that a buyer goes through is going to be more and more extensible and more and more uh, modular that uh, allowing a company like Yappa, which has so many different touch points and so many different capabilities to actually string them together in a way that almost feels completely native, like it was custom built. And that's sort of what we're going for uh, with it. So, you know, I think that the, the reason this partnership is so interesting uh, to us is that we get to work with the forefront of that on, on the customer experience side to be able to hold ourselves accountable really on the platform side to make sure that we're actually enabling the things, uh, the things that we, we, we envision. Absolutely. So everything that Shopify and Yapo offer work together to create that ultimate experience for the end customer, right? Now I can talk vision and big picture all day, but I want to focus on how this partnership will impact the day-to-day -day for our brands. Um, how will this make their lives easier? Why should they be excited about this? Brandon, why don't you start us off? Sure. I think, you know, the thing to be really excited about is that both Yapo and Shopify, you know, you, you, whether you use Yapo or Shopify, even if you don't, I think like you can rest assured that uh, we really understand the headwinds that are facing merchants today. And it really does come down to like, how do you build an audience? How do you engage with that audience? How do you grow your sales within that audience? And uh, this partnership and this investment also shows that you know, when you're using Yacht Post features and you're using Shopify, you can rest assured that those things will continue to exponentially uh, improve and that there's a group together that is focused exactly on that problem, which frankly is the number one problem for almost all merchants. It's a different, it's different for like different uh, stages of merchants, like the ones that are just building out a new brand are going to have a different set of problems than a company that's doing a thousand orders a month and versus one doing a hundred thousand. But it is all touching the same kind of uh, journey within the buyer. And you can rest assured on a day to day basis that, you know, there's going to be more education around those things. There's going to be more capabilities for different types of merchants in, in their different, in different growth stages. Yeah, I'll piggyback on that. I completely agree. I think, first of all, I just think from our perspective, it means, and for the merchant, it means that like Shopify really understand the importance of customer experience and merchant experience with consumers. I think this may be like the biggest uh, I don't know, token for that. And I think what merchant can be excited about is there's going to be more experiences that's going to make it easier in a more elegant way for them to build great experiences for consumers. And it's going to be easier so they won't need to focus on you know stitching a bunch of different things and having like semi-broken experiences but it's going to be like like brenda said idea like very natively built in a way that merchants can focus on the product that they build about their their customers and not just need to worry about the tech that enabling it yeah i think that's a really great point i think like every merchant knows that you know they want more reviews and that they're really great for social proof, but they expect uh, that, okay, they're going to be able to like analyze those reviews and understand how to re-target and, and engage with those customers. Like they shouldn't have to go through and install seven different apps and jump through a bunch of hoops in order to just get a simple report, like as a sort of extreme example. But, you know, as, as multi-channel marketing becomes more and more complex, like you're seeing an ad here, you might leave a review here, refer from another friend here, like how all that gets put together and stitched together in a way that's simple for you to understand as a merchant to say like, this customer is really into your brand. This customer is not and spend your money here, right? Like that, that's basically as simple as it should be getting, but it's actually really complex under the hood. And it takes a lot of coordination between uh, uh, all the different developers on Shopify's platform and how the platform works itself to make that possible. So I think with this, 
partnership, we're really pushing that to the another, another level in terms of like the bar we want to set for ourselves, um, both inside of Shopify and for the ecosystem with Yapo, uh, like holding the flag for it. All right. Well, yes, it's very clear that today brands are extremely ambitious and they need that technology that can keep up with their vision. And this partnership between Shopify and Yapo is meant to provide just that, right? Easy to use, scalable technology that meets and exceeds the end customer expectations. So thank you so much, Brandon and Tomer, for joining me today for this great conversation. It's clear from speaking with both of you that we are extremely excited about this partnership. And we really just can't wait to hear more from the, the people who really matter, which is you, our customers. Um, we will make sure to keep everyone updated on the exciting product enhancements that follow this announcement. So stay tuned and thank you everyone so much. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Thank you, Rosa. And obviously we are very excited about this partnership. But in fact, the opinions that matter most are of the brands who actually use Shopify and Yopo on a day-to-day -day basis. So we asked Nick Sharma, an e-commerce influencer and a D2C master, to lead a discussion with HealthAid and Starface, two exciting brands that are growing extremely fast on the Shopify platform and are using the Yopo products, to talk about the challenges they face and how this new partnership can help them bring their e-commerce dreams to life. Hey everybody, welcome to the panel portion of this event. I'm Nick Sharma, I'll be the moderator today, and I'm here with Shrey Joshi from HealthAid and Chris Aaron from Starface. Um, Chris Aaron and Shrey, thanks for joining me here. As a, as a brief intro, could you please tell, uh, tell the people who you are and what you do at your companies? Chris Aaron, you Maybe we'll start? start with Chris Aaron, yeah. <laughs> sure. Hi, uh, nice to meet everybody. My name is Chris Aaron Canary. I like that you introduced me like Chris Aaron, like I have just one name, like Madonna. Maybe I'll go <laughs> going forward. Um, I'm the SVP of growth at Starface and we are spreading pimple positivity with uh, acne friendly skincare. Amazing. And then, hey everyone, I'm Shrey. So I'm head of digital and growth here at Healthy Kombucha. So I manage all things that have to do with your computers, your laptops, your tablets. So anything that you see from us, uh, me and the team are kind of working on that. And Healthy is a gut wellness brand that kind of focuses on providing products uh, that are, you know, based in prebiotics, probiotics, and, you know, all other gut friendly kind of drinks and beverages. Awesome. So today's topic is all about the Shopify and the Yapo announcement. Shopify is obviously one of the biggest leaders in e-commerce platforms. Uh, I'd love to learn, Chris Aaron, from you first, how you think about Yapo, the role it plays in Starface, both online and also I think it's important to mention how Yapo can play a role in your offline revenue as you guys have you know, a huge retail business that supports it. Absolutely. So we've been using Yapo from the very beginning of our business. It powers all of our reviews on starface.world. Um, and also recently we have signed an agreement to have them syndicated to our target.com uh, presence to help support our products on their site. So for us, it's been really key because it, with all, with all of Shopify, the apps that you use to power your store are really important. And we know that reviews are a huge uh, lever for conversion, um, both whether people are searching for them through Google or when they land on your site and experience them the way that they do through Yapo. Um, and we use the text-based reviews. And also, which I love about Yapo is that they allow for people to upload photos, which I know for my own personal, personal purchasing behavior is really important to me. So it's powered that for us. It's made it really easy for us to implement that on our site. And now on target.com as we're a newer brand and we don't have as many reviews there, um, you know, probably south of 200, we have this opportunity to port over over a thousand product reviews that will help a conversion on, on our storefront, which is great for our business, but also helps with our relationship with our retailer as well. That's amazing. I remember, uh, this past year, we worked with Orgain Protein, which is a, a large retail-based uh, supplements and protein brand. And they had the same opportunity with Yapo to basically syndicate their thousands of reviews from their site to their e-retail partners. And, um, and it, it drove up conversion on those partners significantly. Um, Shrey, over to you. Kind of same question. You know, How do you leverage 
Yapo internally, as well as how do you think about with, I mean, Health Aid has, you know, massive distribution as a beverage, probably one of the largest beverage companies. Um, how do you think about Yapo and its role, both online, but also, you know, in retail and, and building brand affinity and, and customer, um, you know, like bringing them down the funnel? Yeah, I think that from an online platform, you know, very similar to what Chris Aaron was talking about, we use Yachtpo's reward platform. We use, you know, now Yachtpo going and picking up Swell. We also use their rewards platform as well as their referral platform. And then from an offline perspective, we use them as like a consumer engagement tool. So I can kind of go into each one of those components. So from a website perspective, we've actually been with Yappa for the past two years. Pre-pandemic, you know, HealthAid wasn't really a digitally native brand in any, you know, sense of what that actually meant. And we were really just focused on building out distribution. But Yachtpo and their, you know, their actual reviews platform is what kind of actually guided a lot of our kind of SEO and digital presence when we were still pretty early on, because that was kind of one of the few engagement tools that we had, you know, very early days for HealthAid. But once we've kind of gone through the rebrand and we've started to become more digitally native, you know, Yapo reviews kind of plugs itself into showing up in our advertising, showing up in our email and SMS, um, showing up on the website in a much more meaningful way now where you're able to go and, you know, filter by specific things that consumers might be looking for. How sweet is the product? How, um, you know, how much sugar is there? What, what are probiotics and what do they actually do and how does it make you feel? Um, so just not as a like social validation tool, which it already does a great job of doing it. It actually acts as an education tool for a lot of our consumers that are in that purchase decision phase. And then from the actual swell and rewards platform, you know, the biggest thing that we love about is that it adds that kind of gamification that you love um, with, you know, other huge brands like Starbucks without us having to spend, you know, a million dollars a year uh, just managing that sort of app or that ecosystem. So for us as a, as a brand, it allows us to rely less on discounts. It lets us build a deeper kind of engagement with our consumer, allows us to build, you know, digital only rewards only kind of products that, you know, you are incentivized to want to go and get and buy through the website. So it really just acts as like a, an engagement tool as well as a great way of building a lot of our promoters. And then from the last bit on the offline perspective, you know, we've been using a lot of those you know, for Health Aid, we went through a rebrand recently. The biggest thing that you need from a brand is net new UGC and content. Um, once you have new labels, you can't really use the old stuff anymore. So, you know, using Swell or the gamification kind of moment as a like, you know, snap a picture with your favorite flavors or when next time you're in store, you know, grab a picture and we'll send you a couple of points. That That's just been like a really great tool for not having to spend thousands of dollars on content. Um, so yeah, it plugs into every single part of our business. That's awesome. I um, I I can't tell you how many times you know the Yapo loyalty, which for everybody who's hearing swell and googling swell, it's just Yapo loyalty now. Um, that has has come in come in handy a lot <clears throat> for either new brands just starting up, or even you know back when when I was at Hintwater, we leveraged this platform to do the same thing, right? Get people to to get reviews in, engage with social. Um, you know, share or refer the product to their friends, and then it builds up this bank of loyalty points that they can then cash in later. Um, as far as the, oh, and one other caveat I wanted to add, Shrey, back when we were working on the Chacha Macha launch, the, uh, we had set this goal in the loyalty program there where if you bought enough Chacha Macha, you would end up getting a palm tree delivered to your house, which I thought was hilarious. Um, so in regards to the announcement, you know, Shopify, which is very, you know, arm the rebels, uh, founder focused, like, you know, obviously Shopify supports some of the largest brands in the world and their e-commerce platforms. But at the same time, Shopify's biggest focus is making sure that everybody who starts a business now has the tools, has the ability to transact, put a product online, get it shipped out and create that experience. You know, what were your initial thoughts in, in seeing the announcement this morning of this closer relationship between Yapo and Shopify? Obviously, we've all done the Yapo Shopify integration. Um, you know, up until now, it's just been kind of a, a Yapo app. And then from there, you know, depending on your website and depending on your brand identity and your look and feel and your user experience on the site, you have to basically get 
you know, a few different pieces involved to make sure that it feels on brand or, or it feels continuous with the experience. So now knowing that Shopify and Yapo, you know, Shopify's made an investment into Yapo um, and the two teams are going to collaboratively work together to make this process even easier. You know, what are your thoughts for both companies of your size and, and where you're at today and what you're excited about in your roles, but also for, you know, just thinking back to when you started this integration or got Yapo involved in your business, you know, what are some of the things that, that came to mind? Maybe Chris Aaron first. Sure. You know, I think when Shopify takes interest in, in an app that there is in their marketplace and, and chooses to invest, it's it's generally a very smart decision. They have all of the data and the analytics to know what their customers are using and what's going to make it easier for people to get onto the platform and use it as effectively as possible. So it doesn't come as a surprise to me. I think Yapo is such a great tool and Shopify investing in it just makes sense. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not the founder of Starface, but if I were, and I wasn't someone who had a technical background and worked in growth, I think having one less decision to make about the marketing ops stack that you're building just makes your life easier. And I know that there are a lot of apps in the, in the Shopify marketplace, and I've gone through a lot of reviews and looking through which different plugins I want to use and different tools and upsells. And, um, it takes time and it's, uh, I, you know, make those decisions very seriously. So just having one that is, has the stamp of approval from Shopify, it just makes it that much easier for people and they can move on to other, you know, pressing decisions um, within their, their business. So I think it's great. And I'm really excited to see what this partnership brings and how it will improve the Yapo experience and make it even more integrated into the shopping um, experience for our customers. And I just know that it's going to add a lot of value. So I'm, it's pretty exciting. That's awesome. And, and Shrey, same question to you. Oh, Shrey, you're actually, you're on mute. <laughs> Classic. Uh, Post-production guy, thank you again. <laughs> you want to ask it and then I'll, yeah. I'll kick it off again? Yeah. So Shrey, same question to you. So I think that it's all about, you know, the biggest exciting moment is the consolidation game here. I think that a lot of D2C 1.0 was building apps for certain purposes. We needed a reviews app. We needed a referrals app. We needed a rewards app. And then it was kind of up to, you know, the actual growth people as well as the digital people to then go and build all these different APIs that would then call and kind of connect everything together in this like janky sort of way just to make it work. And then from a consumer's perspective, you had to do the same thing. You would hop between apps, you'd hop between pages, um, but it had a lot of the functionality that you were looking for. And so when something, you know, as big of an integration here, a partnership here with, with Yapo and Shopify is that it, it's really bringing everybody into this D2C 2.0 age that we're seeing, where we're seeing a lot of consolidation for not only, you know, us as the growth marketers, where it's a lot easier to, you know, have one platform that kind of hosts a bunch of different functions, but from the consumer's perspective, you know, they have to make less decisions. They have to go around to less pages. Um, and, you know, just kind of seeing everything built together with one consolidated UI, UX, or design is not going to only make, you know, their experience better, but their perception of the brand better. So super excited for that. Yeah, I think you both touched on a, a couple really interesting points that definitely hit home for me. You know, I think the biggest one for me has always been customization. Um, taking an app that has the technical functionalities of what exactly you need it to do but then making sure that it actually fits your brand style and brand voice um, has always been something that, you know, usually uh, founders who have raised capital are able to do much easier than those who are just starting a store from scratch. And I think this, this collaboration between Shopify and Yapo is going to make uh, things like that a lot easier to do. I think the, um, the second point that you brought up, Shrey, was interesting. You know, we have so many apps, right? If you open the average Shopify backend and you click the apps tab, there's just so many apps. And sometimes there's apps that are sitting on your site that you just, you don't use or, you know, you, um, you don't need anymore. And, um, and I think this integration between Shopify and Yapo, not only are they going to continue looking after the customer experience, which has always been at the forefront, but... I think here we're also going to get into things like, you know, how do we make sure the site speed stays really fast with these heavy apps on the site? How do we make sure that, you know, it's Shopify announcing online store 2.0 at their Shopify Unite conference? You know, how do we take 
Yapo and turn the different pieces of the MarTech platform into modules so we can, you know, even easier add them to uh, theme files. And I think the last thing that, that I'm hopeful on is the, the integration of Yapo's MarTech platform within the, the shop app, which a lot of people have now downloaded and, and hopefully then into the shop pay world where, um, you know, so many consumers transact because it's, it's just a faster checkout. Um, so I think we've covered a lot of the main points that I wanted to cover. Uh, I'd love to get to a fun part of this conversation, which is like, you know, let's brainstorm some ideas of what Yachtpo can actually build with Shopify for people like us. Um, I'll kick it off. I think one of the biggest things having worked in a ton of beverage and, and um, CPG, for me, the biggest thing is, is how do we create a universal discounting platform? I think there's a lot of apps in the ecosystem that have uh, different ways to apply discounts. And I think Shopify has done a great job building a CMS, but maybe not as great of a job in terms of how do you create discounts? Trey, we've, I mean, we always text back and forth around things like promos and Black Friday and whatnot. And the most recent one that Health Aid ran was a tiered promotion sale. We were trying to figure out what app do you even use for that? And, uh, you know, there wasn't really one. You have to kind of custom code that tiered promo aspect. Um, so for me, I think the first one that comes to mind is, is this universal discounting platform that works both within Yapo and Shopify and taking it to the next level, even, you know, customizing discounts or, or the way that customers see sites based on their past order history. Yeah, I, I think that a discounting platform, you're kind of spot on there. And like to even add like another layer to it, not just from the consumer perspective, but, you know, on the back end's perspective for you know, your CX teams or for your, um, you know, retention teams, like having a consolidated platform where I can look at, you know, because Shopify does an amazing job of representing everything about the consumer, where they are, what they've bought, how much of it have they bought, but then connecting that layer of like, how many points do they have? What, what have they bought um, in the most frequency? If we've messed up, can we go and add, you know, if we have broken bottles, can we go and add really quickly? 100, 200 points to their next order? Or can we go and add a free product onto the next order? I think that that is going to be a really awesome thing for just the consumer in general and to kind of plug into what you're talking about um, a little bit ago about the shop app. You know, I think that's where the most white space kind of lives in terms of that consumer journey. You know, you typically go to shop pay right now to, to just really say, where is my order? Like, let me just find where that thing is at. And like, let me click on my tracking number and get a couple of push notifications. But if you're thinking about a lot of the things that we were talking about from customer journey, leaving reviews, management of my actual points and rewards program, um, kind of some of my onboarding, like that can all be managed now in the shop app with this deeper integration. So like, think if I was on my way to purchase, I just got my notification that, you know, my order is on its way. And I scroll down a little bit and I could then, you know, have a module or survey that even talks about what my experience was. Once my product comes in, I could then talk through about how I liked the product and what I'd give it as a star rating. Um, and then say that I have, you know, 30 or 40 Shopify stores that I'm buying from. I could have a consolidated rewards program. That's like a mini little universe that I could then plug into to see how many points I have, how close am I to the next product say that, you know, Health Aid is doing a double XP weekend, um, very similar to like a lot of video games you used to play growing up, um, that could show up in the app as well when you're looking at other orders and where they are on their way. So just, I think that th this kind of integration is gonna add a lot of additional consumer engagement touch points. Yeah, when you were talking about Yapo being integrated with ShopPay, I got really excited because I didn't even think that far, <laughs> far in advance. I, I use ShopPay and I love it. and I think that it's done a really great job of closing the loop on where my where is my order and um, even now offering payment and installments, which I think is so great because I was, you know, knee deep in looking at other businesses that offer that and now I don't have to, which is kind of nice. Um, but for me, as someone who's focusing on e-commerce and D2C growth, I am actively trying to build an infrastructure around our e-com business that rivals or can be, you know, at the same level, hopefully, as our retail partners who just have so, so much bigger guns and more resources. Um, so having the referral program integrated into the, the funnel, it'd be amazing. It's, it's, we're going to talk about challenges, but 
one of the things that's hard is like getting people to create an account and coming back and logging in and all of that. Um, I think if you have a subscription and I, my background is in the subscription, it was a lot easier to do that at, at a Dollar Shave Club or a Headspace where you had to log in to use those platforms. But for um, things that are more one-off purchases or the purchase cycle isn't as regular, it's really hard to get people to come back and, and log in and put a password in, especially younger people, <laughs> um, <laughs> which we target. Uh, our Gen Z audiences. So, you know, if we can using the Yapo platform and Shopify together to get people to come back and invest in wanting to buy directly from us, it, that's amazing. And I think what I'm really looking forward to is the consolidation of that data. So like you said, there are so many apps in the Shopify marketplace. And um, I spent a lot of time in the Shopify dashboard and in my analytics dashboards, but um, I don't think that I've gone into an app dashboard to look at data in a minute. I think it's been probably a month and I typically only go in to look at for very specific reasons, but having data in the Shopify dashboard that is then kind of up front and center and actionable based on if people are reviewing, what products they're reviewing, um, what's the most like interacted with loyalty element of our program, is this something that I need to amend? Having that up front and center will be so helpful. And so I think that is something that Shopify does really well. And not to say that Yapo doesn't, just that it's so much harder for me to take that extra step to go into Yapo board and log in and, and, and play around and see what's there. I just, you know, in my capacity, I don't have the time to do that every day. So I am in the Shopify dashboard every day. And if it's there up front and center, it'll be something that I will interact with. So that's something I'm pretty excited about as well. Yeah, that um, that brought up two things that came into my head. So when you mentioned Shop Pay, the the first thing I thought of was you know Shopify Capital is a is basically a growing piece of Shopify's business where they lend money out to founders who who can you know they can essentially understand how a store is doing and uh, and then give them a loan or or give them money based on you know uh, the data they have. And I think also Yapo now. Because Yapo, it, you know, it gives you sentiment on customers, how they're enjoying the products and what they see value in and, and whether or not it's, it is an indicator of whether or not they're going to come back again. I think it also adds another input to Shopify Capital. And I'm very interested to see how that kind of evolves with this, with this integration. The second thing uh, that you brought up, which was interesting, was this level of personalization, which actually both of you touched on. And I do think that another opportunity here is how do we create a... An experience where, for example, when I go to healthaid.com and I'm looking at the watermelon flavor, like I can actually see a review from Shrey because, um, you know, again, if there's that one, you know, the single sign on or, or something where you're logged in through shop pay or, or some kind of like, you know, non email, non password way to log in. But if Yapo now knows that Shrey and I are friends because of, you know, we're also connected through socials on, on Yapo, um, you know, you could essentially, I don't know if it's possible, but I think that's something that that between Yapo and Shopify, they will work toward is bringing more personalization to the web experience for customers. That's yeah, like taking like back to flow. Facebook comment days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I had flashback. But, <laughs> but I do think they that- about like I, the flow. I, you first. I, I was gonna say, yeah, I, I think that personalization yeah. is gonna be a huge part of where direct to consumer goes in the next few years. Obviously with things like, Facebook and Instagram and, and all these ad platforms, the goal is always to make your content be as relevant to the target audience that you're serving. And I think that hasn't necessarily translated over to the site experience yet, just because there hasn't been somebody uh, or, or maybe two partners that have come together to make it happen, right? Shopify is focused on building revenue and, and other platforms are focused on their own things. But I think the combination of Yapo's MarTech platform and Shopify's backend makes something like that very possible. I wonder, and I, this might be asking for too much. I I wonder, because now that Yapo is kind of plugged in here with Shopify, what does that mean for Yapo's integration with other Shopify partners? An example is, you know, Shopify just did an integration with Recharge. And we're, you know, we were just talking about subscription and both of us, all three of us actually, all working with companies that are high consumption products. You know, what are additional, you know, tools or, you know, consumer kind of moments that Yapo, you know, Recharge and Shopify can build together. Can I in the Shop Pay app for a subscription consumer have a very different, you know, customer journey than that of, you know, 
somebody who's an OTP customer? Do we need to, you know, lean on heavy, you know, uh, for our re-engagement campaigns on email and SMS, or can we just do a push notification for the next time that their order is on their way? And do they want to change something that's on, you know, they want to change the flavor that's coming, you know, say that Nick referred me, I can go and then see what Nick's favorite flavors are of the week. And I can go and just like copy what he's doing and like have the exact same, you know, her melon come to my house so that we can like, you know, nerd out about how we, you know, love that flavor, something like that. So I think that just like this kind of adding additional kind of tags in a way on the back end in Shopify um, will just allow like what Nick was saying, just like more customization and integrations across like, you know, the 40 apps that I'm sure that all of us have across all of our, you know, Shopify pages. God, I hope Probably. it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope I, not. I personally prefer smarter over recharge as a yeah. uh, as a it's as a builder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think smarter is a, a, an amazing app. But I'm I'm at one other thing that I'll say uh, before we go is I'm actually really excited to see you know Shopify does a really good job of trying to give that kind of universal dashboard to founders. So. You know, even with uh, with Judy, for example, when Judy launched on Amazon, we actually still saw all the orders from Amazon come through in the back end of Shopify. And I'm really curious to see between Shopify's kind of brain power and goal to really arm founders with the right tools and technology and Yapo's ability to build a world class marketing platform. How are they actually going to position both this integration to actually take on retail channels? You know, there's so many companies. I mean, I see a lot of pitch decks around you know, we help founders get into retail or we, you know, we can secure, you know, a few shelves in, in retail where we can basically put your products there. I'm excited to see um, Shopify and Yapo create a product that, that helps founders get to retail or, or get to the retail buyers or merchandisers in a way that, uh, you know, maybe hasn't been done before, but also in a way that like lets you actually track those rep, that, those sales and that revenue and then follow up with those customers and re-engage, whether it's through reviews or, you know, like you mentioned, Trey, taking a picture of your receipt and scanning it, sending it in, and, and something happens on the back end there. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. And I think there's also a huge gap in the world of, of alcohol in that specific space, because obviously it's, it's really hard to sell alcohol online. Um, anything else, closing notes before we, before we wrap this up? This has been really fun to just jam. Yeah, nothing additional on my end. I think just super excited to see what these two kind of do together as their partnership kind of grows and scales. Yeah. Yeah, I think that last point you made was really interesting. Uh, you know, someone who works very like explicitly in D to C, any we see the the retail growth and the D to C growth separate. But I I know in my heart of hearts that they are very much interconnected. And having you know, again going back to my personal shopping experience, if I'm in a store and I see something, typically. I'll get brought, like looking at the display and getting excited about it, but I tend to try not to purchase anything without looking at reviews. So if there was a way for a business that does have an e-com site um, and is direct to consumer to connect that offline experience and bring them back online and into your infrastructure where you have so many more touch points uh, from a brand perspective, incentives for them to repurchase, maybe subscribe, that would be a huge win. Um, definitely for, for Starface, but I think for most marketers who are trying to do both uh, direct to consumer and retail. So I'm excited. This is really fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I think we, uh, you know, between surveys, between integrations, between site speed, between customization, uh, between the retail component, I think uh, we've given Shopify and Yotpo the next two years of their roadmap. So I'm excited to see what they come out with and hopefully they think of us as beta testers as they build these products. So yeah, anyways, no thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, no pressure, Tomer and Toby, don't hate us. Um, but anyways, Chris Aaron and Shrey, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I know everybody's gonna be excited. Um, is there is there a, a quick place where people can reach out to you guys specifically if they have any questions for you or wanna check out the brands that you represent? Chris Aaron, let's let's start it where you know it yeah, ended where you I'm, can go. I'm the only Chris Aaron Canary. If you find another one, then Highlander rules that she has to go. But so I'm very easy to find <laughs> on LinkedIn or on Twitter. Um, happy to connect. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing for me on LinkedIn. Um, just Shrey Joshi. There's only one uh, kombucha Shrey Joshi in the world that I know of. And then if you guys want to go check out our new rebrand that we just launched, um, go check out health-aid.com. 
uh, you'll love the site experience. It's so good. I have to I say the uh, the new Health Aid site is probably um, one of the best websites I think I've seen. Um, Thank you. From a functionality standpoint, a user experience standpoint, from a a site speed, I mean, everything just it's if you're building a new site and you're a founder, you should go to the health aid site. And uh, you know what they say, good artist copy, great artist steal. So with that, I might have uh, to a designer. <laughs> really good. <laughs> really good. With Congrats. that, um, thank you both so much for joining me and, um, and we'll wrap it up here. All right. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Nick, and thank you everyone for joining us. After we finish here today, we'll be sending the event a recording and a recap with the top highlights of the partnership and what it means to you. This announcement is just the beginning of an incredible partnership that will unlock so many possibilities for brands. We recommend that you keep an eye out for future announcements from Yopo to learn more, and we are super excited to discover the future of e-commerce together with you. Stay tuned and thank you.